Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the News at 6. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting you through the day's top developing stories, starting with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses a mammoth campaign rally in Lucknow, appeals to people to end the exile of development and bring the BJP to power in the state. A day after Akhilesh Yadav declares himself as the party national president, the tussle begins with Father Mulayam Singh Yadav to gain control of the Samajwadi Party's poll symbol. Both sides to plead their case with the election commission. Supreme Court administers huge jolt to the BCCI, removes Anurag Thakur from the post of president and Secretary Ajay Shirke for not complying with its orders of implementing the Lodha Committee recommendations. And the Islamic State claims responsibility for New Year's Day mass shooting in a packed Istanbul nightclub. 39 people were killed in the attack that was carried out by a lone gunman. Prime Minister Modi on Monday addressed a mega rally in Uttar Pradesh's capital, Lucknow. This was his first rally in the state after the 50-day deadline of demonetization got over. And in his address, the Prime Minister took on the state government over development, governance and internal feud within the Samajwadi Party. He also urged the people of the state to vote overwhelmingly for the BJP in the upcoming polls. A huge turnout for the Prime Minister's Parivartan rally in Lucknow, bolstering the BJP's confidence ahead of the Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections. The Prime Minister called it the biggest rally of his career as the crowd cheered on. लेकिन मेरे पूरे जीवन काल में इतनी बड़ी रैली संबोधन करने का मुझे सौभाग्य नहीं मिला जो पॉलिटिकल पंडित हैं चुनाव के हिसाब किताब लगाते हैं उत्तर प्रदेश का चुनाव किस दिशा में जाएगा उसका हिसाब किताब जो लगा रहे हैं ये रैली देखने के बाद अब किसी को मेहनत नहीं करनी पड़ेगी कि चुनाव में होने वाला क्या एंड ही स्टक टू हिज एजेंडा ऑफ लेट फाइट अगेंस्ट ब्लैक मनी एंड डेवलपमेंट ही अर्ज द पीपल टू राइज अब कास्ट एंड वोट फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द स्टेट he also took the Samajwadi Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party to task as he said he was working towards eradicating black money. Uttar Pradesh ki sarkar koi jimme wari lene ko tayar nahi. Haat upar kar dena. Aur udar ja kar ke kishano ko bhadkana. Bhaiyo bheno. दो दलों के बीच में राजनीति हम समझ सकते हैं लेकिन राज्य की जनता के साथ राजनीति नहीं होनी चाहिए देश की जनता के साथ राजनीति नहीं होनी चाहिए दलों की राजनीति दलों तक सीमित होनी चाहिए लेकिन भाइयों बहनों विकास के आड़े भी जब राजनीति आती है अपने पराय का भाव आता है तो विकास रुक जाता है और जनता पिछड़ती चली जाती है प्लेइंग ऑन द समाजवादी पार्टीज इंटरनल फ्यूड मोदी आल्सो सेड दैट द सेंटर वाज गिविंग फुल सपोर्ट टू द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट हु हैड सो फार फेल्ड टू यूटिलाइज दैट सपोर्ट पॉजिटिवली आज मुझे दुख के साथ कहना है मेरे किसान भाइयों बहनों भारत सरकार से पूरी मदद मिलने के बावजूद भी ये उत्तर प्रदेश की सरकार को किसानों के धान की खरीदी की फुर्सत नहीं है आपने कभी सपा बसपा को एक साथ देखा है इतने सालों के बाद एक मुद्दे पर दोनों इकट्ठे हो गए दोनों इकट्ठे हो गए 
दोनों मिलकर के कह रहे हैं कि मोदी को बदलो मोदी को हटाओ मोदी कह रहा है नोट बदलो कालादान हटाओ निर्णय आपको करना है निर्णय आपको करना है भाइयों बहनों वो कहते हैं मोदी हटाओ मैं कहता हूं कालादान हटाओ वो कहते हैं मोदी हटाओ मैं कहता हूं भ्रष्टाचार हटाओ देश की जनता को तय करना है कि हमें क्या करना है Senior Union ministers and party president Amit Shah joined the Prime Minister on stage as he appealed to the people to vote the BJP to power in Uttar Pradesh with a full majority. He also called the UP election a matter of great responsibility. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Mulayam Singh Yadav today staked claim to the cycle symbol of the Samajwadi Party that he founded 25 years ago. This comes the day after his son and Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav was declared the party's chief at a meeting in Lucknow. Mulayam today was accompanied by his brother Shivpal Yadav and close friend Amar Singh and described the Samajwadi Party's election symbol as his signature. Akhilesh Yadav is understood to be sending senior leaders of his camp to the AC to make the same claim tomorrow. In the latest twist to the Samajwadi Party saga, Party Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav put off the convention called on 5th of January. In a series of tweets, SP leadership Pal Yadav said the convention stands postponed for now. He, however, gave no reasons for the abrupt cancellation, but the Mulayam camp seems to be faring a poor turnout compared to the massive gathering at the convention held by suspended party leader and Rajya Sabha MP Ram Gopal Yadav. साइकिल चुनाव चिन्ह को लेकर घमासान मचा है जो जिस तरह से आपने उसको असंवैधानिक किया है क्या कहना है चुनाव चिन्ह चुनाव चिन्ह है समाजवादी पार्टी पर चुनाव चिन्ह है हमारे तस्कर पर on Monday, Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav presided over a meeting of about 5,000 leaders and workers in Lucknow, after which he declared himself elected as the party chief, replacing his father, Mulayam Singh Yadav. Mulayam Singh had declared the meeting illegal and unconstitutional. Akhilesh alleged that his uncle Shiv Pal Yadav, who heads the state unit of the party, and another lawmaker, Amar Singh, had hatched a conspiracy to ruin the party's prospects in the upcoming polls. तो उनसे पूछो जाके जो कर रहे हैं हम क्या करें करेंगे आपने जो फैसला किया जादिगोशन का संवैधानिक है सर संवैधानिक था हाँ तो बस सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज हैं तो उन्हीं से पूछो The proposal to expel Amar Singh was also passed by supporters of Akhilesh who also reached out to his father पार्टी के खिलाफ साजिश हो तो नेताजी का बेटा होने की वजह से मेरी जिम्मेदारी बनती है कि ऐसे लोगों के खिलाफ साजिश करने वालों के खिलाफ हम खड़े हो मैं चाहे अध्यक्ष हूं राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हूं कुछ भी हूं लेकिन नेताजी मेरे पिताजी रहेंगे और नेताजी पिताजी हैं तो मैं उनका बेटा रहूंगा ये रिश्ता कोई नहीं खत्म कर सकता Mulayam had expelled his cousin Ram Gopal for six years along with National Vice President Kiran Moynanda, who chaired the convention, and General Secretary Naresh Agrawal for taking part in it. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And down south, senior AIDMK leader M. Tamidurai has appealed to the newly appointed Party General Secretary V.K. Sasikala to become the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. The Lok Sabha Deputy Speaker also cited the ongoing political tussle within the Samajwadi Party to drive home his point that the control of the government and party should be with the same person. Tamidurai said this after meeting the AIDMK chief at the residence of her mentor J. Jalilatha. Sasikala was appointed as the General Secretary by the AIADMK's top decision-making body on the 29th of December. As she took charge of the post, she pledged to take forward the legacy of Jalilatha. ஆட்சியும் கட்சியும் தலைமையும் ஒரு இடத்தில் இருக்க வேண்டும் இதுதான் அரசியலில் நாம் கேட்டுக்கொண்ட பாடம் இன்றைய உத்தரவு நடைபெறும் ஒரு நிகழ்ச்சி கூட பார்ப்பீர்கள் தந்தை கட்சியினுடைய தலைவராக இருந்தாலும் தன்னுடைய தனையன் ஆட்சியாக இருந்தாலும் இருவருடைய ஒரு மோதல் வந்து கொண்டிருக்கிறது அப்பன் மகனுடைய மோதல் நடந்து கொண்டிருக்கிறது Alright, now in other news, with several states preparing for assembly elections in 2017, the Supreme Court has uh, sought, in fact, uh, said that seeking votes on the basis of religion, race, caste, community or language amounts to a corrupt practice under the election law. Calling elections a secular exercise, a seven-judge constitutional bench that was hearing the case said that its way and process should be followed. 
It also said that it will not reconsider its 1995 judgment that defined Hindutva as a way of life and not a religion. In the 4-3 to three verdict, Chief Justice T.S. Thakur and three other judges said the use of the term his religion in representation of the People's Act meant that the religion and caste of all, including voters, candidates and their agents, etc. However, the minority view of the three judges held that the term his religion means religion of the candidate alone. The majority view also added that secularism has to be considered while dealing with such issues. Our last hope is the Supreme Court, the judiciary. So, in that case, और हम ये महसूस करते हैं कि जब ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजेस जो है वो अपनी कुर्सी पर बैठते हैं तो उनका कोई मजहब नहीं होता उनका कोई आ, 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 कोई इथोज नहीं होती कोई उनकी वैल्यूज नहीं होती उनकी सारी जो वैल्यू हैं और सारा जो उनका जो मजहब है वो हमारा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन है कुल हम बिल्कुल दोनों हाथों से सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजमेंट को सलाम करते हैं और ये कड़ाई से लागू होना चाहिए इस देश की राजनीति को जिन लोगों ने इसमें राजनीति में धर्म का समावेश किया है चुनाव में उन्होंने भ्रष्ट करने का काम किया है और उससे पूरे देश की राजनीति अस्थिर हुई है सामाजिक सौहार्द अस्थिर हुआ है और संविधान की मर्यादा खंडित हुई है देखिए ये तो हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में संविधान में लिखा हुआ है और हम जितने भी जनप्रतिनिधि है हम इस बात को बड़ी बात ही समझते हैं और जो कानून है उसका अनुपालन होना चाहिए तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जो निर्णय दिया है वो पहले से भी हमारे संविधान में है हम उसका आदर और सम्मान करते हैं ये होल्ड कर दिया है कि देखिए जो सेक्युलरिज्म जो हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन का अहम मुद्दा है उसके हिसाब से धर्म का कहीं रोल बीच में नहीं है जाति का रोल नहीं है भाषा का रोल नहीं है रेस का रोल नहीं है कम्युनिटी का रोल इलेक्शन में नहीं होना चाहिए Now, India on Monday successfully test-fired its nuclear-capable strategic ballistic missile Agni-4 from a test range off the Odessa coast. Describing the trial as successful, DRD officials said this was the sixth trial of the indigenously developed Agni-4 missile, which met the mission's objectives. The sleek missile, having 4,000 km strike range, is a two-stage missile. It's a 20 meter long, weighing uh, 17 tons, and the last trial conducted by the specially formed Strategic Force Command of the Indian Army on the 9th of November 2015 was also successful. With that, a quick break. More news follows in a bit. Stay with us. Nelson Roli Lala Mandela, affectionately known as Madiba, was South Africa's first democratically elected president, an international peacemaker and statesman, and a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Through a long career as an activist, Mandela was a crusader for equal rights for South Africa's black majority. Having undergone frequent imprisonment, in 1964, Mandela was sentenced to life in jail, charged with sabotage, treason and violent conspiracy. He narrowly escaped the gallows. He was released in 1990, having initiated talks with South African President de Klerk towards ending apartheid in the country. Mandela was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1993 for his efforts. In April 1994, the Mandela-led African National Congress won South Africa's first elections by universal suffrage. And Mandela was sworn in as president of the country's I, first multi-ethnic government. Nelson he retired from the presidency in 1999 and from public life in 2004. Nelson Mandela died on December 5, 2013 from a recurring lung infection.
Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back. In more national news, the Supreme Court has removed Anurag Thakur as the president of the BCCI and Ajay Shirke as the BCCI secretary over not complying with its orders to implement the Lodha Committee recommendations. The court also issued show cause notices to Thakur and Shirke asking why contempt and perjury proceedings should not be initiated against them. The court said that a committee of administrators will look after the affairs of the board now until the matter of course comes up on the 19th of January. In a big jolt to India's cricket governing body, BCCI, the Supreme Court on Monday removed Anurag Thakur from the post of president for not complying with its orders of implementing the Lodha Committee recommendations. The court also issued a notice to Thakur seeking an explanation why contempt proceedings should not be initiated against him. BCCI Secretary Ajay Shirke was also removed from his post. For me, it was not a personal battle. It was a battle for the autonomy of the sports body. I respect the Honorable Supreme Court as any citizen should. Honorable Supreme Court judges feel that BCCA could do better under retired judges. I wish them all the best. This was a logical consequence because so long as order of the Supreme Court passed on 18 July stints, BCCA was bound to follow it. And being at the helm of affairs, if they were not able to implement the Supreme Court order, these consequences were bound to follow and that is what has happened. A bench headed by Chief Justice T.S. Thakur also directed all office bearers of the BCCI and state associations to abide by recommendations of the Lodha panel or demit office. The apex court ordered that a committee of administrators will look after the affairs of the BCCI, clarifying that the senior most vice president of the board will now act as the president and the present joint secretary will assume the work of secretary. The court also said it will pass a separate order on January 19th for appointing an administrator. इनको बोर्ड ने रिमूव किया है और नोटिस भी इशू करके परजरी और कंटेम्प्ट इनिशिएट कर दिया है साथ ही साथ नौ साल जो पूरा कर चुके हैं जो चार सीटेड हैं ठाकुर जी चार सीटेड हैं सत्तर साल जिनकी उम्र पार कर चुकी है जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स हैं करेंट मिनिस्टर्स हैं ये लोग अब बोर्ड में या स्टेट क्रिकेट में नहीं रह सकते and whatever Supreme Court has that, that is the final and we all have to abide that. That's the only reaction. The sports fraternity has welcomed the decision saying it will benefit the game. This message is that we are doing more than ever in BCCI. We need to do that. As I said earlier, it's a billion dollar industry. So, as much as we get professional, it will be better. Today, it's clear that ये जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन साइड है ये किसी की जायदाद नहीं द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैड गिवन द बोर्ड टाइम टिल डिसम्बर थर्ड टू इम्प्लीमेंट द रिफॉर्म्स सजेस्टेड बाय द लोधा पैनल द बोर्ड हैड प्लीडेड दैट इट कुड नॉट इम्प्लीमेंट ऑल द रिफॉर्म्स विच इंक्लूड लार्ज स्केल स्ट्रक्चरल एंड मैनेजमेंट चेंजेस the Lodha Committee, headed by former Chief Justice of India Aram Lodha, was set up in January 2015 by the Supreme Court to suggest changes in the working of the BCCI. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now with that, let's take you through some more sports updates in Sports Beat. India's singles tennis player Somdev Dev Varman announced his retirement from professional tennis on Sunday. The 31-year-old said that it was the right time for him to quit international tennis since the passion with which he used to play was dying. Somdev touched a career high rank of number 62 in 2011. He has two runners-up finishes on the ATP World Tour as his best performances on the tour. Spain came from behind to stun host Australia led by Nick Kyrgios in their opening match of the Hopman Cup in Perth. Nick gave Australia the lead with a straight sets victory over Feliciano Lopez 
but the hosts lost the second single and the doubles match to lose 1-2. The United States defeated the Czechs 3-0 in their opening tie on Sunday. Arsenal defeated Crystal Palace 2-0 on Sunday to go third in the Premier League. Olivier Giroud opened the scoring for the Gunners with an outrageous Scorpion kick. Alex Iwobi scored in the second half to ensure Arsenal's victory. Arsenal are nine points behind Chelsea and six behind second place Liverpool. On to international news and the Islamic State has issued a rare claim of responsibility for the attack in the Istanbul nightclub. In a statement, the terror group said that the attack was carried out by a hero soldier of the caliphate, quote-unquote. Meanwhile, authorities are still searching for the gunman who killed a police officer guarding the club before going on a shooting rampage inside. At least eight suspects have been detained so far. The statement also had a warning for the Turkish government for its role in the Syrian conflict. However, it is not clear whether the Islamic State organized the attack or the gunman was simply inspired by the group. This is just the first time that the Islamic State has claimed direct responsibility for any attack, even though several terrorist attacks in Turkey of the past year have been attributed to the group. And here are more international news updates in Global Buzz. A suicide car bomb killed at least 35 people and injured more than 50 in a busy square at Iraq's capital, Baghdad. No group has claimed responsibility yet, but the Islamic State carried out similar attacks recently. In fact, the terror group claimed the two suicide bombings at a market in the city on Saturday that killed 28 people. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on Sunday said that the country was close to test launching an intercontinental ballistic missile. Kim also denounced the US and South Korea for conflict in the Korean Peninsula. North Korea has been under UN sanctions since 2006 over its nuclear and ballistic missile tests. The sanctions were further tightened last month after Pyongyang conducted its fifth and largest nuclear test on the 9th of September. Danish police have arrested the daughter of South Korean President Park Yoon-hee's friend who is at the centre of an influence peddling scandal that has put Yoon-hee's presidency on the line. South Korean authorities have been seeking the arrest of Chung yoo ra for her ties to the scandal which has paralysed Park's government and drawn hundreds of thousands of protesters onto the streets of Seoul for weeks. Heavy smog and fog continue to shroud many cities in China, jeopardizing traffic and causing inconvenience to people. North China's Hebei province and Tianjin municipality issued double alerts for heavy fog and haze. Parts of eastern China too witnessed heavy fog, forcing expressways to be closed temporarily. And that's what we have for you in the News at 6. Thanks so much for joining us.